welcome to Ability Assistance. My name is Phyllis Jones, Chair of the North Andover Commission on Ability Assistance. My name is Stacy Liebowitz, Secretary of the North Andover Com Commission on Ability Assistance. Please stay tuned after the show for important information about changes to the Community Choice Power Supply Program. But today, we are pleased to welcome Kerry Whalen, Executive Director at Challenge Unlimited at Ironstone Farm. Welcome, Kerry. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here with you both this morning. Well, thank you. Well, no, we, we appreciate you coming. We're always interested in introducing new programs and new facilities yeah. and, and just new ideas for people who are trying to help people of all different abilities. Mm -hmm. Let's start a little bit with, we, all, we always say, everybody comes into this field in terms of helping people with different abilities mm -hmm. based upon a personal background. Could you share yours? Sure. Um, I have a 18-year-old son who has high-functioning autism. Okay. Um, and uh, as any parent or family that has you know an experience like that, you know that you um, spend a lot of time kind of in and out of various mm -hmm. different kinds of interventions, programs, therapies, and the reason that I'm so excited to be here representing Ironstone Farm is because I believe that the intervention and the service that's being provided there is truly making a difference. Did your son participate in the program or something similar? So we've on, actually never done um, equine therapy, um, but we've done a lot of other therapies, mm -hmm. as anyone can imagine, and I know how powerful it is mm -hmm. when you find something that works, whatever yes, that yeah. is, right? And different things work for different people for different mm -hmm. reasons, but when you find that thing that actually clicks and makes a difference for your child and for your family, just want That's more huge. and more and more of that, right? And I see it making a difference for so many families. That's amazing. Yeah. And what, yeah. what has brought you to Ironstone Farms? Um, well, um, my, my background is actually in social work. Mm -hmm. um, I have my master's in social work and I spent um, the first part of my career, if you could be so bold as to call <laughs> it that, um, actually in uh, therapeutic foster care. Um, and so okay. working with um, foster care children who had um, dis disabilities and other different kinds of um, challenges. And, um, and then I had my kids and um, I stayed home for almost 10 years with my kids and I would not change that time for the world, <laughs> um, especially having a child with, um, with some extra needs, right? It was really wonderful and I feel really lucky that I was able to be home and kind of be the person that was Managing that, right? You're almost like a like a general contractor that, in that, some ways. That's yeah, almost that a full time yeah. career. It is. It is. It is, <laughs> it is, a, full it is a full time job. And honestly, I feel like I learned so much more in that ten years of time yes. um, than I think I probably could have if I had gone back to work. Um, about myself. Mm -hmm. About advocating. Um, about. Um, believing and seeing things that you didn't think were possible that all of a right. sudden were. Um, and I think that time actually really made me um, want to get into, more into mm -hmm. um, kind of the disability space um, right. in one way or another. And like most of us, you probably saw things you didn't know were there and yeah. realized what was missing. Absolutely, absolutely. And and also feel like we met some really incredible people that we would never have had the opportunity to right. meet if we hadn't, we didn't have a child um, with autism. So yeah, yeah. And then um, I worked at an organization. So we moved from um, Baltimore, Maryland um, a little over two years ago. And um, when we left there, I, I worked for an organization for a long time there called Itineris, um, and we supported um, adults with autism. Okay, okay. So it was a um, job job placement, community integration, mm -hmm. independent living skills. That's great. Was it yeah. the full spectrum you were dealing yes. with? Yes. Yep. yep. Amazing. And then you found your way up here into Yeah, we found our way Iron up Stone here, Farm. and um, we're you know so happy to be here. We've been wanting to move up to this area for a long time. We've got family and friends mm -hmm. um, here, and um, somehow, just as life happens, yeah. right, you kind of stumble upon these opportunities. And um, you know, I went uh, the first time that I was at Ironstone and and took a tour. 
um, I was able to stand what well, we call it the little indoor and it's one of the spaces on the farm mm -hmm. that we provide some of the um, earlier intervention um, hippotherapy and um, I happened to be standing there and um, I assume it was a dad and a son on the horse I don't know but assume that that's what it was and um, you could see sort of the the change in the child's mm -hmm. face on the while he was riding on the horse and kind of this big mm -hmm. smile and this just like sense of joy and I looked over at the dad and he had that same kind of look right and it was right. almost like mm -hmm. joy mixed with disbelief right that he wasn't he couldn't believe that his kid was was doing this right that's amazing Isn't and it amazing yeah. how animals yes. just my son has you know his dog right yeah. you know the, yeah, very right, very similar. Yeah, uh -huh. who is a service animal. Um, you know, sometimes they refer to the dogs as therapy dogs, mm -hmm. but they're service animals if they learn how to do one thing. Um, and just, it, it's helped him focus. And I mean, look at all the people who ended up getting animals during COVID. Yeah. yeah. Just in oh, general. Yeah. Just I mean, in general to, to be able yeah. to Oh, yeah. feel with working at home and I mean we feel some sense of normalcy exactly Absolutely. I mean we, we ended up getting our dog just before COVID uh, because we're just dog people but it turned yeah. out because of COVID to be the best thing because of working at home and ultimately my husband lost his job as a result of COVID so having her was actually kind of therapy for mm -hmm. him so I think the power of animals um, can't be understated I completely agree so having a place like Ironstone Farm, I'm sure, is really pivotal in that. And I guess leading into the next question is, what does Ironstone Farm do as far as uh, the, the therapeutic horseback riding? Give mm -hmm. us a little bit of a background of, um, of this organization. Yeah, sure. So uh, we provide uh, therapeutic riding mm -hmm. as well as um, group programming. Mm -hmm. So um, our therapeutic riding, the focus is generally one it's either one sometimes it's a small group but it's mm -hmm. a one-on-one -on -one rider right. um, with a licensed instructor um, and s usually volunteers of some kind are involved as well and the goals during those lessons time that the, the rider has very specific goals whatever it is that they're they're working on um, mm -hmm. and the goal is to learn more about horseback riding horsemanship um, and things like that and then we have our programs um, and in our programs we support all different kinds of groups so we have groups that come um, we have veterans groups we have programs for touch therapy so these are um, seniors with Alzheimer's and dementia and they come on the farm and um, just interact with the horses groom pets That's spend amazing. time with the horses um, we have uh, some we have cancer retreats so we have groups that come in that are either in active treatment or in recovery from cancer um, and providing some respite experience. Um, and then we also work with a couple of different organizations that support families that have children that are dealing with cancer and they come in again for um, respite, bonding, family time. Um, so yeah, we have a lot, a lot of different uh, things going on. Our youngest rider is um, 18 months. And oh. our oldest rider is over 80, and we um, serve and support all the people in between. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty awesome place. What kind of horses? I, I remember yeah. visiting there yeah. um, several years ago and, and being told that they're a specific type of mm -hmm. horse, and they are absolutely wonderful. You can tell. I think you, you've friendly. sent over yeah. a couple of pictures, right? Yeah. I did. Maybe yeah. if we can get one or two of those up on the monitor yep. so that people can see. Yeah, that would yeah. be great. And you can explain a little bit more about what these horses are like and how they are good for this particular job sure. that they do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I, I wish my equine director was here because she could do this <laughs> way more intelligently than I will. But I will do my best. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, halflingers, mostly halflingers. halflingers yeah. um, and the reason that we use halflingers is because they are, um, they're stocky. So they can hold um, a pretty substantial amount of weight, mm -hmm. right? Which so that we have, because we serve adults and all yeah. different kinds of people, right? right? Um, and that helps a lot. And then they're also shorter to the ground mm -hmm. so that um, we can support our riders and get, and so riders that are on, some of our riders, they're not just riding, right? They're doing other kinds of right. physical right. activities, right. Um, sensory integration, things like that. And so the shorter horses allow us to be able to interact with the rider a little bit easier while they're mm -hmm. on their horse and then these halflingers just have the most wonderful disposition 
um, and they're also very, very in tune to people. That's great. Um, and That's to people's great. emotions and to where, where people are and meeting people, right, exactly where they are mm -hmm. in the present moment. Um, and so, yeah, that's why we, we mostly have half, halflingers at, at our farm, and um, yeah, they're wonderful animals, that's really. Amazing. So they can mm -hmm. pick up on if somebody's a little hesitant about mm -hmm. being near, a, mm -hmm. you know, especially like a toddler, they might see yep. this animal and be like, oh my God, that, right. that thing is what so, is it? yeah, <laughs> what is it? It's so big. Yeah. Um, so the, the horses can pick up on? They can, yeah. yeah. So one of my favorite fun facts that I learned when I first started this job is that a horse can feel your heartbeat from five feet away. Oh, that's wow. amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and that, you know, so as you approach an animal too, right, you can, if the animal, a horse, you know, acts a little skittish or maybe kind of get, you know, moves away a little mm -hmm. bit, it could be because maybe they can you're sense your skittishness. a little anxiety, right? Your heart right. might be racing a little much and it's oh. a really uh, great exercise to kind of walk yourself through, right? Because you have to then Calm yourself, Calm yourself down, down. Yeah. right? Talk your, make, you That's know, amazing. get yourself in a different place and then kind of approach, approach the horse, so. Now, obviously, one size doesn't fit all. <laughs> um, especially when you're talking about working with people of different abilities. Mm -hmm. Sure. Can you explain some of the, you know, maybe give a background of one of the people obviously without mentioning names, mm -hmm. you know, one of the people you've worked with recently, what their needs were and how the farm has helped provided them. that yeah. service. Yeah. Sure, yeah, I'll, t I'll, I'll keep it a little um, generic, but yes. we've got a number of riders that fall into this category um, where we've got our um, early intervention program, which is hippotherapy, so that's licensed occupational therapists mm -hmm. and physical therapists that are working with the kids on the horses. Um, and we've had a number of um, kids start that have cerebral palsy um, okay. and are not either not walking at all or walking with great difficulty. Right. Okay. Um, and they start coming for their riding lessons and all of a sudden they start moving a little bit better and you watch them when they first get on the horse and you can immediately see a difference in sort of how they're holding up um, and able mm. to support. Um, their core and their That's trunk amazing. and the rest of their body and you can see um, you know it moving a little bit stronger and a little bit differently um, and after a couple of lessons then the child is often moving better outside of the lesson right whatever that means for That's the child right. 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 it could yeah. be that they weren't walking at all and all of a sudden they're taking a few steps or maybe they were walking just not super well mm -hmm. and now they're more confident um, but we've had a number of riders that were not walking um, and then after a few weeks of um, the hippotherapy and the work with the horses and, and our physical therapists, all of a sudden they started walking. Um, mm -hmm. and we have a couple families who've had kids that have taken their first steps um, at Ironstone um, and kids that have gone from walking to running. So um, it is, it's a really, it's, it's an incredible, incredible intervention. Yeah, no. that's really heartwarming. I mean, yeah. it's amazing. Can you imagine starting off and then seeing that change mm -hmm. for the families, for that's the right. person who's being served, mm -hmm. but also as staff and volunteers, mm -hmm. that must be amazing to mm -hmm. see that it just reinforces absolutely. what you're doing. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Now, as somebody who doesn't understand enough about how to deal with yeah. horses <laughs> and only watches Western movies when it comes to <laughs> dealing with horses, you see the person they put a foot into the saddle foot area. Yeah. This tells you how much I know. <laughs> and they swing their other leg around and all of a sudden they're on a horse. Mm -hmm. Obviously you're talking about somebody who has mobility right. concerns. Mm -hmm. How does that person get on the horse? Oh yeah, so it's a good question. And um, we, um, you know, our physical therapists are amazing. Um, and they really know how to work with, with people, right? Mm -hmm. And then many of our therapeutic riding lessons have four adults. Um, to make that riding lesson possible. Right. For right. one so child? For one child, yeah. Or so one, one or person. One person. Right. So that's where the volunteers so, come right. in. Right. So we'll have either an instructor or the licensed physical therapist mm -hmm. or occupational therapist. Then we have a lead, which mm -hmm. is a person. So the horse is you know, attached to a halter and the person has the horse, mm -hmm. right? And then we often have two sidewalkers. Mm -hmm. So there are people on either side of the horse ensuring that whoever the rider is is safe up there, um, you know, and making sure that they're right. watching their balance and things like that. So 
there's a lot of different, a lot of moving parts right. um, for many of our just one single lesson. Um, and we work really hard, our, our, my team works really hard to train um, our volunteers and our staff mm -hmm. um, to make sure that they're comfortable, right? So if there's a rider that needs assistance, we'll often, um, we have steps that they can, you know, uh, right. plastic steps that we move around and that can help them move up. We have a couple of different ramp options. So if we have riders that are in, wheel, you know, use wheelchairs or mm -hmm. other kind of mobility mm -hmm. device, yeah. they can kind of get up to the top of the ramp and, you know, then get on the horse that way. Um, we also have um, something unique and we have a lift mount. So um, okay. for riders that are um, in a wheelchair or like, you know, other mobility devices, we um, have a large lift mount in our big indoor arena and so they can take their wheelchair and come right up to the side um, of the ramp um, and we end up moving the horse on one side and the the lift comes over lifts the rider up out of their wheelchair and on to the horse that's oh that's so, fantastic that's great. how yeah. how tall is the horse not in terms of the head but in terms of the body where right. the person would sit um, it it varies. You mean you mean like from a from standing next to the horse kind of thing? Or? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it varies. I mean, some like using me for example, some of the horses only come up, you know, come to here or here, mm -hmm. and then others I really have to, you know, their their body is kind of up over right. my head. Now I'm you know I'm kind of small, so that's. <laughs> I was going to say, what do. what are you five but, six? Um, yeah. Five six. I'm only five three. Okay. Um, yeah. But. Um, but yeah, which is why also why the halflingers are nice because yeah, they're shorter. Yeah, because of the size. Right? Okay, yeah. so it makes it's a, sense. It's a lot easier. Um, and our equine director and equine team do a great job mm -hmm. of working to match um, horses and people and volunteers and riders, right? So that it's a good fit for so that the riding experience is positive for everyone. That's great. And yeah. how um, for somebody who's interested, mm -hmm. you know, you have a parent with a, a child um, who would be interested in participating. What is the process uh, involved in that? Yeah, so um, I would say the first thing to do would be to go to our website, mm -hmm. ironstonefarm.org, um, and you'll see listed under our programs and lessons, there's a drop down, um, right. and you can, you know, just put some basic contact information and click right on through. Um, and you'll either go to our lessons mm -hmm. person or our programs person, um, and they'll get back to the person and help um, usually, you know, some paperwork and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, uh, yeah, and we do have actually some lesson openings happening mm -hmm. in November, um, especially in the middle of the day. Okay. Um, that sort of Great. 12 to 3 time frame, we still have a few um, openings. So for people that are interested, mm -hmm. can definitely reach out and we could, you know, look to get people started. So, um, and what's the time frame? So it sounds like there's a cycle. Of, um, of the programs, mm -hmm. what is the cycle usually? So right now we generally have people commit to a month. Mm -hmm. um, and is that a calendar month? Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. and then um, starting in 2023, we're gonna actually look at expanding that and making that a oh. little bit longer oh, um, right. because it'll help. Um, it helps with scheduling and mm -hmm. then it also helps uh, riders and families because we're really kind of building on building on skills right, and they've right. got longer periods of periods of time so um, yeah so right now it's about a month and then in 2023 that'll that'll build out just a little bit longer and for the financial piece because mm -hmm. obviously there's a cost involved yep. if you have families that are struggling a little bit financially mm -hmm. um, are there programs in place is there funding in place what are some of the options for those because I know something like this is probably not very cheap mm -hmm. may not be the most expensive thing mm -hmm. but and it's probably not covered by health insurance right exactly so what is are some there health any insurances do cover it actually. Oh, really that's so actually people, that would be good to know yeah Absolutely. so people yeah. should check so with their not health a lot, insurance not very many and it only for us it's only our our um, hypotherapy, so it's only the lessons okay. with the licensed OT and PT. That makes sense. Um, yep. because you, you, you have medical potentially right. use your insurance, um, but there's only there's very few of them. That but people are, still should check with their insurance yeah. company you never know. to see yep. yeah, what yeah. the options are. But outside of that. Mm -hmm. Are there funding sources? What are some of the options for those yeah, families? No, thank you for asking that question. And we um, we really want for this service to be yep. accessible to anyone. Um, mm -hmm. And so we do um, some fundraising through what we call Sponsor a Child, uh, where we try to raise money mm -hmm. through individual donations and grant funding to cover the costs for okay. families um, that may not be able to afford um, the lesson either on their own completely or partially. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so I encourage um, families to reach out mm -hmm. um, and talk with us and, um, and see what the options and see are. See what can be done. Yeah. Talk through some of those different options That's for them. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you mentioned the veterans program. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got so many veterans, especially ones yeah, that came absolutely. home recently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, veterans have always been underserved, mm -hmm. and especially when it comes to things yeah. like PTSD. Absolutely. It's almost been ignored, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in this country. Um, what are you doing? Veterans is important to me, if no other reason than my family's connection to the military. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do specifically for the veterans? So we have a couple of different veterans programs. Um, and they, the veterans, and they come to us from different organizations, generally. Um, and we hold um, either half day or a couple hour or full day. Mm -hmm. We also also have a program where we've got a multi multi day and we call it a retreat program, right? Okay. And the idea is really um, we don't provide a clinical, um, any kind of clinical intervention okay. for mm -hmm. um, PTSD or trauma, but we do provide retreat retreat and respite. Um, and um, the a day program can for some of the veterans can it always starts with um, you know kind of some talk, right, mm -hmm. and learning a little bit yeah. about each other and, um, and talking a little bit about the farm. And then we always um, introduce the veterans to the horses. First, we'll, we'll do something yeah. like a paddock experience where we'll take um, groups of veterans out to where the horses live and talk about you know, where they live and herd dynamics and kind of get them started getting used to being mm -hmm. near the horses. And then we'll do some, we generally do some grooming. Um, and that um, the purpose of that is really around building trust and rapport and that sort of social emotional connection with the animal that's so important. Um, and then um, depending upon the day and the activity, uh, we always, we have a challenge by choice model. So, um, you know, no one is forced to get on a horse and ride if they won't want to. Um, but we encourage everyone um, to the level of their comfort to try it. And some of my um, favorite veteran stories are the ones where um, the veterans are, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not getting on a horse. Horses are scary. No, thank you. I'm just going to kind of stand here and watch. Um, and then, um, lo and behold, a couple hours later, you turn around and there's that same person right up on that horse with the That's biggest amazing. smile on their That's face. Amazing. Right, and they, you know, and that experience proved to them that they could do something that they could that they didn't think they could do, right? Um, it helped build back some trust, right? Yep. Probably of themselves and of the horse, right? Um, increase in sort of connection and some of that um, social emotional um, support, and then also communication um, mm -hmm. because you have to learn how to communicate with the animal w without using words mm -hmm. right you have to use I mean you can use words but like it's really it's body language and it's what you're bringing to the situation um, and so that kind of teaches a higher level of communication skill too Absolutely. so I would imagine too just the act of grooming mm -hmm. I was gonna say that and just it's, it yeah it's calming uh, yeah, the horse it is for the veteran or anybody Absolutely, yeah. Um, Especially if the horse is just standing there yeah, being... Just sort of being in the moment. Yeah, just willing to yep. just be there and, mm -hmm. and, not, and not make you feel apprehensive at all. I wanted to ask you about um, the volunteerism mm -hmm. and, you know, for the people who've been served by um, Ironstone, have some of them become volunteers ultimately? Yes, definitely. We have a number of veterans that have come back and are now volunteers with us. And then we recently uh, ran a couple of retreats through um, some grant funding for um, people that are in recovery. Mm -hmm. And we've had some of those participants come back and serve as volunteers. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and the other, we also have staff that started out. Um, we have a working students program. Mm -hmm. um, okay. and we have staff that started out, um, you know, kind of in our intern working students program and are now you know, um, barn managers and our equine director. Um, so and they're flourishing. Flourishing. Within. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. No, that's fantastic. And then um, I wanted to ask, you had mentioned earlier on uh, special programs you run for people with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and dementia. Mm -hmm. My grandfather had Alzheimer's. My uncle mm -hmm. um, passed away from dementia. That can be scary for families and scary for, you know, how, how would these horses going to interact mm -hmm. with 
you know, we, we're still learning so much about Alzheimer's and dementia. Yeah. Could you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. sure. So, um, and I have a personal connection to it as well. My dad has dementia. Um, and um, so we, they, they'll come in um, and they'll usually sit in one of our indoors. So we have a small indoor uh, mm -hmm. riding ring and then we have a large one. Depending upon the day, they'll come in and generally kind of sit um, on chairs or benches and we'll bring a couple of the horses and our donkey. We can't forget to mention our donkey spud <laughs> um, in to Aww. meet with them. Um, they don't do any riding. It's really just grooming, interacting, talking with the horses. Um, you know, and um, it, it's such a wonderful interaction to watch because you can really see the physical change in them from when they first come in, right? And um, people that are far into Alzheimer's or dementia can sometimes have like kind of a bland affect. Um, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you bring the, anim the horse or, or the donkey to them <laughs> and there's a smile on their face and the light is back in their eye. Um, it's just, it's really heartwarming. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And just before we wrap up, you're open all year. We mm -hmm. are, 365 days a year. Yes, we are. E even Christmas and even East? Well, we don't have programs and lessons right, on Christmas right. and Thanksgiving, but we have 27 horses that need to be fed. Um, and a farm that needs to be cared for. So you for. still need so volunteers. Are, <laughs> yes, and, and I will say that our volunteer program um, is incredible. Mm -hmm. We have almost 250 volunteers. Oh, that's um, and impressive. And we roll about 100 to 150 through every week. Mm -hmm. um, and our volunteers, um, they are the backbone of our organization. We could not do what we do without them. Mm -hmm. We have them at 6.30 in the morning, uh, feeding and taking care of horses all the way through you know, eight, eight o'clock at night doing the same thing. And then all the lessons and the programs mm -hmm. in between. So they are, they are our lifeblood, our lifeline, um, and just a wonder, wonderful, incredible group of people. Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's amazing. That yeah. is. Well, I want to thank you for being here yes. uh, and telling us so much about Ironstone Farm. And uh, we will be putting information up, right? Yes. For, for uh, the organization, but thank you for Great. taking time to speak with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been such a pleasure. I've really enjoyed talking with you both. Um, so yeah, thank you very You're much welcome. for our making time for us today. No, we, we always love to bring on new mm -hmm. guests, new programs, new ideas, because that's the only way people who yeah. get the information out there. Exactly. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. So Carrie, on behalf of all of us here on the North Andover Commission on Ability Assistance, thank you again for joining us. You can reach Carrie by phone at 978-475-4056, extension 107. And you can learn more about Challenge, Un Challenge Unlimited at Ironstone Farm at www.ironstonefarm.org. There you go, you Yay. got it all. <laughs> This information is special just for our residents of North Andover. Are you aware the town's Community Choice Power Supply Program has changed? If you're like so many of us who left the town-sponsored program over the summer and moved back to National Grid because of the higher rates, mm, yes, <laughs> it's time you may want to consider moving back. You can call Colonial Power Group at 866-485 5858 extension 1 to learn more about the town also sent postcards I got gotten text alerts phone calls mm -hmm. emails from the town they've put their information up on the website and Facebook page but you must opt in in order to obtain the town contracted rates go to colonialpowergroup.com I always forget if it's forward slash or backslash it goes <laughs> like this North Andover, or call 866-968-8065 and ask to join the Town of North Andover's program. I called in, one of the things they asked me was for my account number with National Grid, so just be sure to have it with you when you call in to opt in or opt in via the email. It was very easy, it took me a few minutes to do. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'd like to thank our crew this month uh, and I hope I get the names right. <laughs> Cassie Buono, John Coffey, Alec Santiago, and from the North Shore Academy, our own uh, Zachary Jones. Our upcoming season schedule is really starting to fill up. Yeah, 
Join yes, us I'm next month when it. Stacy switches sides <laughs> and is our guest representing Bridgewell and discussing transition planning. Mm -hmm. and in December, we'll be joined by American Training. In January, we'll be joined by an old familiar face in North Andover, Barbara uh, Latalia. Very excited for that. She's now the Executive Director of the Disability Law Center. We've been actively talking to the Doug Flutie Foundation. Mm -hmm. They've got a 5K, I think it's this week. Tomorrow, weekend. Yep. actually. Yep. And we also know that the legislative delegation for the town will be changing after next month's election. Mm -hmm. And we will be extending invitations to all members of the legislative delegation to come in and discuss their legislative agendas for the next session. We're constantly looking for new topics to explore here at Ability Assistance. We would truly love to know what do you want more information about? Is there something specific that you'd like to learn about? Please feel free to email me at pjones at northandoverma.gov. And as always, in addition to watching through your cable station, you can catch all of our programs on demand on YouTube, the Cablecast app through Roku and Apple TV, the North Andover Cam website, and the podcast is always put out on Podbean as well. Until next month, thank you.